After working a few years, nine to five, plus part-time jobs and side hustles and side gigs, now you've got a little bit of a hefty profit and a little bit of money left over. Now you ask, what's next? I'm Munif Ali, a self-made millionaire who started a YouTube channel for the sole purpose of sharing my life experience with you to teach you how to succeed and become more successful not only in life but in business. If you like the type of content that I create, go ahead and hit that like button and that subscribe button, but not at the same time. First of all, congratulations. You've made enough money to start to take a risk to create a better financial life. So what should you do first? Let's look at the money you've made and you need to ask yourself what your goals are. It's not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, I could just tell you that. It's not buying a private jet. It's to invest in your retirement fund. The fact of the matter is, unless you prioritize your financial goals, you'll just end up saving the money that you should be spending to do the right thing. The earlier you start, the better it is. You'll have to forego all of those nice and cool things that look good on the surface and start taking a practical approach to investments. According to a survey from the NIRS, 95% of millennials who don't save early will be stuck in doing three things. Putting a strain on their lifestyle as they get closer to retirement age, reducing their standard of living through their retirement age and pushing back their retirement age. So even if you're a millennial or you're younger than that, it's time to start now. Remember to pay yourself first, not treat yourself first, right? We all wanna treat ourselves first, but it's actually the opposite. Pay a little to your retirement plan first. I started an IRA when I was 14 with all the jobs that I had all throughout high school and literally is still in effect today. And I'm glad because I've been in a retirement account for a long time. One more tip, evaluate how much you need to reach your financial goals and assess your risk tolerance. According to JP Morgan, there are three factors that determine your risk tolerance. Time horizon, this refers to how long you'll keep your investment. If you're saving for something that will take you decades to complete, you need to start now. So let's say your retirement plan. You need to take more risks in the beginning because you have a longer span of time. So you can afford to do that as you get closer to retirement age, that's when you start limiting your risk. Since we've already discussed this, second is gold. What's the purpose of your savings? Is it to buy a house? Is it education? Do you wanna meet some other kind of goal? It's best to take more risk to increase your contribution. Now, with risk appetite, can you handle an investment with a reduction in 10%? Think of it as your pain tolerance in terms of finances. Take only investments that you can live with because you'll never know what the market can do. So are you okay with losing 10% of your money? Is it 20% of your money? Is it 0% of your money? You have to ask yourself that question. An article by Erica Giovanetti of Fox Business states that most Americans have emergency funds, but only 45% have enough money that will last for six months. That's just the least amount of money. What happens when you run out of the cash? You might end up using your credit cards that yield a high interest rate. And in turn, that could cause you to go into even more debt. What you can do is to start saving a bit of cash and participate in opening a bank account because some banks offer a $100 bonus when you open an account anyway. And that 100 bucks can go a long way in investing. It's not a lot of money, but at least it's a start. You can also consider getting life insurance. I know many people don't agree or see the point of life insurance, but it guarantees that if something tragic happens to you, you're a backup emergency fund for you and your family. And depending on what your status is at the time, are you married, do you have children, do you have parents that depend on you? It's better that you're protected than leaving your family to pick up all the pieces. But before you get insurance, assess your money. How much can you contribute to your insurance? Don't just get the cheapest. According to Savology, 84% of millennials are underinsured. Getting the minimum for your insurance may just end up being waste since if an emergency happens, you'll only get a bit of extra cash that won't last long and you'll be in trouble anyway and you've already paid for this insurance up front. So don't be cheap on yourself. One of the best things that you can do with your extra cash is to invest. There's so much more you can invest in right now to expand your portfolio. Stocks, crypto, homes, real estate, just any kind of property. Just remember to invest based on your risk tolerance. You can stick with high paying bonds that are less riskier and still promise a good return. Just a little while ago, I said the big capital B word bond and some people were like all over me because they felt that it wasn't a great hedge against inflation. Not everything is a hedge against inflation. Sometimes you just want safekeeping for your funds. And as of late with interest rate rising up, guess what? Bonds have gone up as well. An article by Elizabeth Gravier of CNBC estimated that some types of bond could offer as high as 10% return. But if you don't mind having a bit of a roller coaster, then you can invest in crypto. Just remember your risk tolerance and see what fits for you most and try a little bit of many little things with a small amount of money that you don't mind losing, but at least you'll be more educated about cryptos or NFTs or any other thing for that matter. And before I tell you the last one, if you like the content I just gave you, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure on that like and subscribe button. Me and the YouTube algorithm them know 
that this content and this video is valuable to you. I intend to make content every single week, so also hit that bell notification so you know when a new video is coming out. Buying a home or real estate can be a tricky subject in this financial world of ours right now. If you're considering it as an investment, it in involves a lot of risk, commitment, and money. In fact, an article by Hillary Fowler has found that 82% of millennials have regret buying their first home because they were rushed into buying their house during the pandemic without assessing their risk, and now they're having financial remorse because they overpaid. But it can always be avoided. If you do your research, assess your risk, and remember houses and property expensive investment, so make sure that you take the necessary steps. If you have a lot of cash and you're unsure about where to spend it, you can use it in an emergency fund, life insurance, buy a house or property, use them to further your investments in stocks, bonds, crypto. Remember to evaluate your financial goals and assess your risk tolerance before you take any step. It's best to keep yourself on track to avoid financial decisions that you'll end up regretting. But what you won't regret is clicking that like and subscribe button to help us grow our channel so we can reach more people, so we can promote more personal finance. If you want to find out more about investing in crypto, go ahead and watch this video next.